Okay, so now we have um, a couple of A HRT pieces cut and a couple of B HRT pieces cut. Now the next step I'm gonna show you is an optional step. I actually do not um, use this for the most part, but it's nice to have. Some people really love it and, um, and have come back and thanked me for it after playing around with the hurdy. And a lot of you are gonna do like me and skip it all together. But if it makes your brain happy, then let's do it. So on the, uh, the hurdy, you're gonna see this illustration here. Um, if you're looking at the side A of the ruler, you're gonna see it's gonna be in the right-hand edge of the ruler. And it's for one, um, okay, so let's back up just a little bit. We've been cutting one to two ratio. We talked about ratio early on, one to two ratio. And we'll see the, that one and the hexagon like that is going to reference the, uh, all of the one to two ratios. The two is going to reference, and the hexagon is gonna reference that one to six ratio. So, and the trim guide is going to correlate with that. So the one on the bottom is one, and the one on the top is that two in the hexagon. So we're gonna use one because we've been cutting things along that one line, set of lines there. Okay, so uh, the trim guide is just so that when you place these right sides together to take them to the sewing machine and cut, that it lines up perfectly. I'm gonna show how I do it and I'm gonna show how you can use the trim guide if it makes your brain happy. Now that illustration is gonna show uh, the way that you place that HRT piece under the ruler. So in this case, it shows the A side. It shows the exact orientation of how you place it. I'm just gonna stack one of each of these fabrics of the A, line them up just like that. And then it tells you to put that little bitty tiny orange tip, just line it up with the corner just like that, and we're gonna chop it off. Just like that. And I'm gonna leave these not trimmed with the little trim guide, and I'm gonna do the same thing with one set of the B pieces that I have. And in, in case of the B, either you could flip the ruler over or you could just leave it on the side and turn your fabric upside down to cut so it's the same orientation as the image on the ruler itself. It's just a trim guide. Just like that, just lining that little ruler at the, I made the little triangle at the edge of the ruler and trim it off. Now and I'm gonna show you the magic of this. And some people are gonna love it and some of you are gonna do like me and think it's a little bit of an unnecessary step. So let's do A first and then we'll look at B. And I'm gonna show you how I do it for the most part, and then how you can do it with that trim guide. Okay, so now these shapes are perfectly cut down so that we can align the two ends and don't have to do any kind of overlap or anything at the ends. So we just match it end to end, just like that. I think it's a slightly unnecessary step. Some people love it. You can do it if it makes your brain happy. What I do is I line up the edge and have overlap on the ends that look like that. So you see how that V is a quarter inch from the edge of the fabric. As quilters, we do this a lot and so we're kind of used to laying it out like that. The, uh, the other reason why I don't use this a lot, it's nice, it's fun to have, some people love it, but the other reason why I don't use it a lot is this, yep, these are oversized pieces and we're gonna square them up later. So because of that, um, I don't even worry about lining this up perfectly either. I just line it up pretty decently and then we're gonna sew it with a quarter of an inch, come back, we'll talk about pressing in just a moment and then after that we're going to square that baby up so it's completely up to you if you choose to use that the little trim to trim the tips or not we'll do the same thing these are the b shapes this is the one these are the ones that were trimmed the tips were trimmed and we could just line it up end to end 
and it's perfect. We won't have any dog ears or anything, just like that. And of course, this is the way I do it, is I leave that overlap on either end. So I'll show it to you a little closer, just like that. And you'll see that on either end, okay? So now, um, if you choose to, you can throw a pin or two along the edge to keep those aligned. Make sure you're not stretching at all because you do have a bias on those edges. Then I want you to take those to your sewing machine and just sew a quarter inch seam down the diagonal. This is also one of those where we don't have to be super perfect as well. So I'm going to take these to my sewing machine. I'm going to sew them all and I'll come back and we'll talk a little bit about pressing. Mm -hmm.